Okay. So I will try to be yeah more consistent on the information I give. So guys, if you're struggling, League of Legends. What is it? What is playing League of Legends? You have a set of information. Based off this information, you're gonna make a decision, a plan, and then you're gonna try to follow this plan, to apply it. That's what we call mechanics, actually. Like mechanics is just like the way you click and you use your abilities to follow the plan. Some people are like highly mechanical and they only rely on that and they have like no plan on the game. Some people have really good planning and knowledge of the game, but they're they're really bad mechanically. But it's it's a really 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 small proportion of um, of the population, you know. Like you don't have to be good mechanically to be good at this game. You can get master plus easily playing like shit mechanically. So, but if you can can manage to have like the three of those, and most of the players that I've coached in the in the the gold, platinum, elo range, and even some silvers have like some pretty good mechanics. Like uh, I have nothing like more than them. It's all about the knowledge, and it starts in champ select. So you can already do the exercise. Like for example, okay, they have Wukong, they have Aesol. What can what can we say about these champions? Well, Wukong is a pretty strong jungler in the meta. And, and like one of his big strengths is his double ultimate, of course. So he's very dangerous in a 5v5 situation if he can manage to engage. So against comps uh, that are weak against engages, he's really strong. And plus they have Aesol. So if you if you can match uh, Wukong R plus Aesol R later in the game, can be dangerous. Also Aesol, it's a hard scaling champion. So if the game goes to 30 plus minutes, they have a really strong weapon here. Okay, but look at what we have here. Kha'Zix scales, like it's not a scaler like uh, Aesol, but uh, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good champion later in the game with his evolves, etc. And then you have Zaya Rakan, which is one of the best uh, bot lane to receive in reception, because Zaya has her feathers and then Rakan has his charms and his bump, etc. So it's good that uh, some of their strengths are already matched by our strengths, and they have scaling, but we have scaling. Awesome, so for this, like, I'm happy of that. And then they have Tristana, so let's see if it's Tristana mid or Tristana bot. There is a chance that it's, um, what is it gonna be? Is it Shogat Sup Tristana bot? So if it was Tristana bit, I will, uh, I will be very uh, scared of the Kassadin matchup, because Kassadin is good against mages, but he's really weak against uh, AD champions, especially a Tristana that applies a lot of pressure. But here I think it's she's gonna be bot lane, and then uh, I'm gonna be facing either Timo or Shogeth. One of them is sup, one of them is top. So that's why I took magic resist. And we'll see. It's Shogeth. So Timo is support. Uh, which is pretty good for us that they don't have like a, uh, an engaged sup to, to have Wukong with his engages. Mm. Kha'Zix is playing Dark Harvest, so even if he wants to get level 6 and power farm, like I think he still wants to be there um, on lanes early on to try to, to get uh, Dark Harvest stacks. Mid is gonna be like a perma, like a trouble farming for both sides, but I think it's gonna be easier for Aesol still uh, to have Pryo and to push and maybe to roam. But I'm not too afraid of uh, an Aesol early. And then the Shogath matchup. I mean, they buff Shogath a lot. Uh, it's it's pretty strong. It's pretty annoying. But uh, early on, I can still manage. So I need not to trade him when he has his E um, up. I, I straight up don't win it. And I need to try to dodge his Qs by having like uh, uh, unpredictable movements. And, uh, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes after level 6 and we need to be careful if he has his R to ult like pretty early. And uh, and yeah, for all the reasons that I talked about, I think our um, team comp is easier to play um, even later in the game. But Aesol is always like super scary and Shogas has some pretty cool scaling. So we'll see. 
we'll see how it goes. Then, once you've done that, this exercise of uh, getting info, now you have um, new information, which is uh, jungle tracking. So I see my uh, classic starting bot, and you saw Shogath uh, was on lane. So it's likely that uh, Wukong is starting bot as well. I mean, if he fights me, ah, that's what they're doing. I was gonna say if he fights me in my wave, I I win it. But Timo was there. It's okay. Hopefully, it gives out enough space for my bot lane to take an advantage early on. That was a bad trade going back in when he still had his E. Um, it's okay now. I mean, we talked about it last game. Trindamir Infinite Sustain. Like, I will just show you. I will. I will not force anything. I'm just chilling. So as I said, um, Kazix is doing bot to top, right? So now he cleared his bot game. So even if he ganks mid. What is he gonna do after is uh, do his top camps, right? But then we saw that most likely Wukong did that as well. Uh, I'm not moving because they're winning this without me. Or maybe not. Okay, that's... Uh, I mean, we were have perma information. I'm gonna get, get pinged off here. My team is gonna ping me, probably. Okay, no, I'm actually surprised. So most of you would have moved here, tried to compensate. Um, I will explain why I don't move, even in, in higher elos. I mean, unless it's a, it's a one situation for sure. So Timo was here level one. For this reason, Shogat was able to crash the wave. So for that reason, the wave was pushing back to Shogat, right? The thing is, if I move, for all the time that I'm moving on the map, my minions are pushing to him. So it means that I am the one... That was actually pretty stupid. I, I, I only uh, bet on the fact that uh, Shogat had to flash on the skirmish. And he had no flash and I could trade kill. When I was actually like super safe, I could just go off and and take the pressure from three three champions. It's alright. So I was gonna say for this time my minions are pushing. So every uh, second that I spend um, out of my lane, I'm losing. I'm bleeding out golden experience. So unless I'm a hundred percent certain that we'll get something in compensation in the fight, I will not move. I will uh, get what's. Uh, what's certain over what's not, basically. Okay, yeah, my bad, I, I could have just lived. Uh, I did not have to use my flash, my ghost, I got a bit hyped up. It's all right. Now I'm gonna slow push, try to stack a wave, because I'm still like, I'm not afraid of Timo, but I know like he can uh, he spent a lot of time top. Most likely he's gonna keep doing it. The good thing is my bot lane um, won from the early pressure they had. It's two kills on Zaya. I don't have to do anything crazy. Yeah, Tristana is struggling by herself. We saw Timo moving on the map. And the fact that I slow slow pushed and I just last hit the CS makes it so that now I'm getting level 6, but I have space to play on. If I pushed harder, these waves will be uh, matching like way closer to his turret, to Shogath's turret. So I wouldn't be able to punish. I mean, he's respecting. Props to him. But now even if Wukong comes, okay, Wukong is not there. Without Sims, uh, he has tab eyes. I don't think I can dive. So I'm gonna just use the time that I will buy to myself by slow pushing to 
take a reset. I mean, I can get a plating. Can I get two platings? Okay, now there's another important thing that I will be using a lot. It's just like basic knowledge of the waves. The fact that uh, the cannon wave, uh, they come every three waves. So it's two normal waves, one cannon wave. Two normal waves, one cannon wave. And very often, like your players say, like you should back on the cannon wave. The reason being, like I'm backing, Shogath he wants to fix his wave, like he wants to, to probably crash it, take the resources and then take a base. But on the cannon wave, it takes him like way longer to do so. So here he's still like struggling getting it. And now my turret is gonna hit the cannon for quite a long time. I mean, I kind of want to kill him, but I also kind of want to not lose this whole big wave. And I still don't know where Timo is. So let's not flip it. What's certain over what's not again. And I did, you see, the only time I didn't respect that concept, I, I died under turret. The only time I went for something flippy. Like, I flipped the fact that he used flash and my team uh, didn't ping me that he used flash. And I died from it. So it's generally a good principle to have. So anyway, you saw, like, uh, backing on a cannon wave, if you have more time and then your turret is gonna hit the cannon for, like, 7 turret shots before you lose the XP from it. So it gives you a lot more time. Here I'm still gonna wait the next wave, crush a really big one. Because it's going to give me more time. I don't think I can dive the Shogath from full HP. Or I know I can't. But uh, I see that Kha'Zix stop. Maybe you can play for Herald. Maybe we can... I don't know. Just do something. Play for plating. Okay, I see Wukong. I'm gonna go there this time. So now I have a good room timer. Because now, if Shogath leaves, he's the one losing all the experience. So you see, it's not that I never help my team. It's that I don't help them when I can't help them, basically. And I think that Shogat actually moves. Um, I didn't see him use his ult. I'm not sure if he has it. And if he has it, he can one-shot me pretty much. So I'm just gonna chill a bit, sustain back up on this guy. And then I'm back to lean. Quick, 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 some crits. Crits, please. Crit, crit, crit. Nice. He dies. Okay. Good. I got the kill for myself. We kill Wukong as well. Mm. Yeah, I should have... No, let it hit once more. Um, is it only Timo? Because I knew Shogath wanted to back. That's why I pushed fast this time. To deny him as quick as possible some golden experience. But, I mean, Timo is respecting anyway. I'm just gonna put a word here real quick. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead anyway. I mean, it's pretty good. I got the 300 from Herald plus... Plus I got the Herald. So they might die here. But I think it's actually really good. 
I mean, it was a bit flippy again. Maybe I'm doing a bit like too much flip plays. Uh, because, like, uh, again, I didn't know that Wukong had no, no smite. But, like, the way he was playing, it felt like he had no smite. I don't know, it's body language, you know? So I kind of went for it, it worked. Botlane is winning super hard from the fact that Timo is never there. I don't think it's a good play for my bot lane to go. I mean, Isaiah has Kraken already, so it might actually be good. Okay, now I have Herald, so I have until 14 minutes to use it. So I get plates. Sheesh! You know what? I might just use it right now. Use it when I can. Look like I could. But bro. Two levels ahead. I can do shit. I mean, now with Kraken Slayer, I might be able to finally kill the guy. So it's by Kraken Slayer. Let's move on Navarre's. Could have sold pots for um, Pink Ward, but there is no objective yet. Like for the next three minutes, we have no objectives. So we don't really need the Pink Ward, in my opinion, for something. Anyway, like even if I die twice, like in terms of pressure, like I took the whole plate for zero plates. I'm ahead in CS by like a lot, 40 CS. I took the Herald. And that's just like... Legendary. Waves basically. That made me like... Uh, create this lead an advantage. Like when you, when you want to look to go for 10 CS per minute, it's not about like the way you click, it's about the way you manage your waves. And you're there when there are CS to take. Okay, I see Shogath on the map. So I'm actually not gonna finish this this golems. I, mean, I can do it this way and start hitting this. Timo is there. He's gonna be annoying. He can uh, make me lose a lot of HP and uh, deny me like uh, hits on the turret with this blade. Did he use Q? Yeah, I think he used Q to try to steal the the camp from me. Yeah, Wukong is coming. He might have, uh, have his R, Shogath. So let's not flip anything. We were playing for the T1, we got the T1, so I'm happy. Oh. Okay, Tristan is top. Can probably kill with the Kha'Zix if he wants to come. Doesn't maybe with Rakan. If Rakan doesn't, maybe I can just solo with my sums. Okay. So Botlane is backing. There's nothing to play for. As of now. I would just wait a bit so their wave denies my wave a bit more differential and now I can start pushing because the Drake is in 130 and there's gonna be a Herald soon so I can start pushing now I would actually love to have pressure uh, on this timer so I can just like crash a big wave to that turret into move to the Herald probably so someone has to def top and it's gonna create space for my team and space for me to get the objectives I mean, I don't need to do it, but uh, it's, it's a bit advanced, but I think it makes sense. And even me, like, uh, I, I'm learning, you know, guys, I'm still practicing a few things. Just want to see what happens, I try to play it this way. So yeah, it's going to be on the next wave. Maybe I pushed it too fast, though. 
There's someone in that bush. So yeah, you, you saw I saw it with my W. I knew he was here because of my W. And now I created the pressure I wanted to create. And now Drake is free for my team. I mean, it was already because they're so ahead. But you get the idea that... Uh, I was playing on. I am your worst and now Wukong has no ultimate. So I can just go for this. It was bad to dash into Shogath. Like, uh, in my opinion, like I, I still do it a lot, but if you cannot kill the heart still. Uh, like get something from trading to a champion that bought hard still. Maybe just avoid him so you don't give him like free stacks. Unless like you need to go for the wave or something. Here I didn't need to dash in and take a little chunk on him. I could just like go to the herald straight and not give him the the stack. Okay, I have Navori at base. So now next objective is going to be Nash. How do you help your team to do Nash as a split pusher? Either like you just go there or you bring someone bot and go there, which is better. Or you just go bot and bring multiple people there. Like you need to create a, a number advantage. That's, that's the best way to do. And also like if you could take bot in Hib. It's, it's the best because this way like someone is gonna be stuck bot and you can just like go play with your team etc. So that's why I'm gonna use my Herald bot rather than top. It's to help for uh, Nash basically. Or just I'm gonna you know exist bot lane. We have a Zaya with three items. And we have a Kha'Zix, so we do Nash like pretty quickly. So I don't want to die now, I don't want to do anything crazy. My bot lane is uh, starting to have pressure, Kha'Zix also, this guy was back. I see there is a play mid lane, but Kha'Zix should be fine. Now they are moving towards top, so maybe it's time for me my heralds can I look kill the Tristana okay now Shoga TPs okay my bad they all came for me I mean they used a lot uh, the thing is imagine if I did that 30 seconds later, so I thought they were all committing to topside. That's why uh, I went hard here. So if I just put the Herald on Tristana, I, it would charge. But if I get Tristana first and put the Herald, I can take the T2, take the T3, etc. But see if I stick to my plan and, and wait a bit and kill her on Nash timer, my team could have just done Nash here. Like if Timo, Aesol and Shogath are on bot side, my team can just Nash. Shut down. So that was my bad, my mistake. Okay. Cassadin's coming. I'm coming as well. I have no ult, no flash, no ghost, but I still think it's very winnable. Okay, let's shrink that. So yeah, forget about, so you saw I said like, Nig, you have information, you make a plan, then you try to apply it. 
Well, the next step is that after applying it or trying to apply it, you have a new set of information. So you need to make a new plan, you know? So it's still important to keep your mind open and be able to switch plans if needed. Do they have vision here? You know they do. Let's go on Timo. I mean, we could have done Nash, but Kha'Zix went really far bot lane. There's a third Drake in 20 seconds. So I would just let my team play for this. Maybe I pressure mid instead of pressuring top. For that Drake. Mid prior is super important on any objective. Now we see. Okay. I will collapse Timo and then. So my team should let me bot and play around Nash this time. There is a high chance that they won't do it, but I think that should be the plan. I mean, if we kill Wukong, there, for example, I could stay on side lane, but what am I gonna do? Like, I'm not gonna kill the Shogath, he's gonna perma clear the waves. So I might as well bring Shogath bot into rotate to my team. So we can go for this, but we still need to be sort of careful. I mean, we. We melt it because of Kha'Zix, because of Zaya, because of me as well. Didn't smite it. Did he have smite? Oh, he didn't. Okay, that's something I actually lost games in GM. Because I didn't check that my jungler had no smite. It's actually super important. I'm gonna buy this. Mm. So what now? I mean, when you have Nash, the best thing to do is to pressure multiple lanes, right? So, I see Cass is going mid, I see my bot, uh, Cass is going bot, my bot lane is mid. So I kind of want to go top. But if this happens... I should have hit. Didn't play that trade, but they didn't have to. Mm, are we not? Are we not ending? Are we not ending? Wait, where is she backing? I mean, now we can't end. They're respawning with gold spent, HP. And stuff. So I'm just gonna chill. Wait for my team to be in a position to pressure again. Hello, Mr. Wukong. Monkey man. <laughs> yeah, I had to be more careful. Okay. I was flexing a bit too much, gave a big shutdown, but you see even when you do bad plays, but you do them on a time where your team is in a position to pressure, well, your team is just gonna take something from it. Boom. Okay, I should not get cocky.
Isaiah yeah, has some damage now. She has four items in health. Yeah, she doesn't look like she wants to end. She wants to get kills. Uh, it's okay. I'm just gonna move to their base. If we can end, we end. If not, I play for triple inhib. Okay, I think it's over now. GG's. I mean, I died a lot this game. Got a bit cocky. Did not respect uh, the roaming Teemo. But uh, still, with the simple wave management, I got 10 CS minutes. I was pretty fed. I played on timers to get my team's objectives. I get two heralds. I get turrets. I give space to, to my bot. So it's all good. It is all good. Okay. Well, let's keep.